I think we're in a low key recession. So I think that we're going to probably go through a couple of very difficult revisions of old data. The thing to remember about non farm payrolls isn't as much what the number is, but if you actually look to the number of times it then gets revised, the reality is that these things get revised constantly. And right now we're in this trend where we are overestimating and revising down. Sachs mentioned this, that that was the same with GDP. So we are, I think, in a tough situation. 1.6% in the first quarter of 2022, followed by another 0.9% decline in the second quarter. While consecutive quarterly contractions fit one definition of a recession, the National Bureau of Economic Research, which officially determines recessions, concluded that other key factors were not met. The White House also rejected claims that the U.S. was in a recession, with President Biden and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen pointing to record job growth as evidence. Yellen emphasized that creating nearly 400,000 jobs a month does not indicate a recession, describing the economic situation as unique rather than broadly weak. In the months that followed, Yellen and the Biden administration continued to argue that the U.S. economy was displaying strength and resilience despite the Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hikes. They frequently highlighted positive indicators such as low unemployment, strong consumer spending, and healthy household savings, describing the economy as being in transition rather than in recession. This narrative persisted until July, when unexpectedly low job numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics raised concerns. Billionaire investor Chamath Palahapitiya, along with other members of the All In podcast, argued that the U.S. economy was either already in a recession or on the brink of one. Chamath, along with venture capitalist David Sachs and CEO David Friedberg, shared pessimistic views, predicting that the U.S. economy could face significant challenges before the end of the year. Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself first ahead of the crowd. We have created the ultimate step-by-step -step crypto cheat guide that will guide you this bull run. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Now by clicking on the link below to get your exclusive copy just under $10. And then what you're seeing is folks that run very cyclical businesses are telling us in very plain spoken English that demand isn't there. So the one that was interesting this past week, Jason, you mentioned millennials, but like Airbnb, where you think all these young people are running around YOLOing what, whatever cash they have, Airbnb had a massive warning on demand. So when I think the excess capital, whether it's the STEMI check or what have you, has been exhausted, you're now starting to see it bear out in these cyclical businesses. I don't think the demand is there. I think we're in a recession. It probably becomes more obvious in Q3 and Q4. And so Powell's going to have to cut. The question is, will he overreact to the pressure and cut 75 to 100 versus 25 and take it slow? Obviously, you have to account for inflation and government spending. How much of government spending is driving economic growth? Today, the U.S. is proposing to spend $7.3 trillion next year out of $25 trillion GDP. So the U.S. federal government is roughly 30% of GDP. And we obviously still are tackling inflation. The real question is how much of the economy is growing because of productivity gains in the sector of the economy where people are making things and doing things versus the government using its ability to tax and borrow to drive growth in the economy by inflating numbers, by pushing revenue onto businesses, by pushing capital into the markets, by creating levered trades in the markets using their um, borrowing capacity and their taxing capacity. So that's the thing I remain concerned about. I, I mentioned this last week, I remain highly concerned about many sectors of the economy that are deeply challenged right now, particularly the industrial sectors, the manufacturing sectors, the agricultural sectors, but um, services and software sectors where you can raise prices and you have a nice high margin business, you can continue to, to grow and, and look good. But there are many parts of the, uh, the global economy and the US economy that are pretty challenged right now. I had lunch with a very prominent investor yesterday who's very plugged in with the hedge fund community. And he said that the sentiment shift you know, I'd say, again, within hedge funds, professional investors, public market investors, had been very sudden that people were now very worried about the risk of a recession. And, and I do think that the Airbnb revenue that Shamas cited is a big factor. 
Airbnb stock went down 15% in, in one day on soft demand. And what's driving all of this is, is consumer weakness, or at least fear of consumer weakness. You mentioned the rise in unemployment. It went from 4.1% to 4.3% month over month. So 4.3 is still a pretty low number by historical terms, but to jump so much in one month, that's a pretty big increase. And then, of course, it's up from 3.5% a year ago. So we're seeing pretty big increases in unemployment. 10% year over year, 5% month over month is very significant. Yeah. yeah. So these are big changes. There's real evidence of, of consumer weakness. And I think professional investors are, are getting quite worried about uh, the risk of a recession. And if you were to remove the impact of government spending, it's pretty clear the private sector is in a recession. I mean, like we've been talking about, government's been going hog wild with spending. We have The government is running 6% of GDP deficits. Uh, the, the latest Q2 growth number was something like 2%. So if you force government to live within its means and to cut its way back to balance, we would definitely be in a recession. We'd have a negative growth rate. Uh, so I do think that the economy is looking pretty shaky all of a sudden. Uh, whether we actually tip over into a recession in the next few months, I'm, I'm not sure. According to the latest report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the U.S. economy added only 114,000 jobs in July, and the unemployment rate rose from 4.1% in June to 4.3% in July, reaching its highest level since 2021. This unexpected increase in unemployment has triggered the S rule which suggests a recession is occurring if the three-month average unemployment rate rises by more than half a percentage point within a year. Currently, the S rule reading stands at 0.53%, up from 0.43% in June. Although the S rule has historically been a reliable indicator, its creator, economist Claudia Sam, has indicated that this situation might be different. She noted that labor market fluctuations, such as labor shortages and recent increases in immigration, could affect unemployment rates in ways that the rule might not account for accurately. Bank of America CEO Brian Monahan also contends that the U.S. is not in a recession and does not foresee one in the near future. In a recent CBS appearance, Monahan stated he has not observed signs of an impending recession and commended President Joe Biden and the Federal Reserve for achieving a soft landing for the economy after inflation surged to multi-decade highs in 2022. However, members of the Owen podcast team disagree with these optimistic views, citing various concerns about the current economic conditions. For additional insights, check out more clips from their discussion. It is crazy expensive how, how like prices have gone up like 50 to 100 percent on like everything at the mm -hmm. supermarket. And this is like it's basically impossible. We can, afford it. We, we can deal with it. But like a large percentage of people, this is a big deal in terms of like now you have to budget your life and you spend less. Matt and I, when we're here in Portofino, we go in the morning to the fishmonger and we'll buy, you know, fish for the family. It is unbelievably expensive. And, you know, we always think to ourselves, how is it possible that folks can actually choose to eat healthy and local if they want to? It's next to impossible. What was a Branzino? What was a whole fish? Tell us. If, <laughs> if you want to have like locally caught sole, it's like 48 euros a kilogram. Wow. Okay. And like, it's expensive. And wow. it's expensive like for more all than a restaurant. Of... <laughs> so to, to feed a family of seven, which is what we are, You'll have to spend, you know, $150, $200. It's not sustainable. It's not something that can, that makes sense for enough people anymore because that probably used to be 40 bucks or 30 bucks. But Freeburg is right. Like we're in a real serious problem because it's, it's like these systems have remained the way that they have been for a very long time. And while other industries like the tech industry have captured all these incredible efficiencies, but the problem is that then these other industries are what supports everyday people's everyday lives. And in the absence of a way to actually reduce cost and improve quality, you end up where we are today. And I don't think that that's sustainable. About recession, Jason. I mean, yeah, look, yeah. I've been predicting the same recession. But I think one of the reasons why it might finally come now, first of all, you've got a lot of investors are suddenly worried about it. There's been a big sentiment shift. I think the other thing is I don't think we know all the bad news yet. Mm. Unknown, unknowns. Yeah. Well, n none of us were tracking the yen carry trade like very, I mean, it was something we may have heard of, but it's not like we were actively thinking about it until this past week. And the question is how many more things are out there like that? And I also think that the pattern with this administration has been to hide the ball. They hid by senility for years. I think the MO of this administration has been to hide the ball. And okay. 
any good news they would have reported. Do you think that they're reporting all the bad news? I don't. I think there's more bad news that's going to come out after the election because there's too many incentives for people to, to hide it. Investors are increasingly optimistic that the global economy will achieve a soft landing where inflation moderates without significant economic slowdown despite rising interest rates. According to Bank of America's August Global Fund Manager Survey, released on Wednesday, 76% of respondents believe that a soft landing is the most likely outcome for the global economy over the next year. This is the highest percentage predicting such a scenario since May 2023. Additionally, a notable 93% of investors expect short-term rates to decline within the next 12 months, marking the highest level of confidence in falling rates in the past 24 years. Do you think the Federal Reserve will announce a rate cut at the next FOMC meeting in September? How might such a move impact the U.S. economy and asset prices? Share your thoughts in the comments section. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.